Hello, fabulous fourth graders. Today in science, we are going to be pushing a little bit of that insulators and conductors talk from yesterday and a little bit of our energy conversions that we've been talking about. And we are going to see how heat can transfer to make new energy. So if you will turn your attention to the screen, we're gonna hear first from Doug. Hi, it's Doug. Imagine if you lived your whole life without ever leaving your town. If you live in the mountains, you never see the ocean. If you live by the ocean, you'll never see the mountains. Imagine the country where you live is the only country you'll ever visit. That would mean, unless you're within walking distance, you'll never get to see things like the Hollywood sign or Disney World or a sunset at the Grand Canyon. You'll never get to visit the Eiffel Tower in France or the Great Wall of China. You'll never see the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. It's kind of sad to think of never having a chance to see any of these things, right? But if you lived in pretty much any other time in history, that's what it would have been like. Long distance travel just wasn't possible. People were pretty much stuck wherever they were born. If they did travel, the journeys were slow, uncomfortable, and sometimes even dangerous. Luckily, travel today is easier and cheaper than ever. It's so easy, we often take it for granted. But stop and think about it. What's one distant place that you'd like to visit in your lifetime? How would you travel there? All right, I want you to think about that. What is one place you'd like to visit in your life? And how can you get there? Do you need to travel by car, by plane, by boat? Maybe you can walk there if it's not too far away. Maybe you'd even like to use some roller skates. A long time ago, if you wanted to go somewhere, you had to get there by foot. Like imagine you wanted to travel across an entire continent, like from one side of North America to the other. On foot, that would take you about six to eight months. A journey like that took such a long time and was so dangerous and difficult that it wasn't really a trip that most people took. Before long though, people realized there's a better idea. Why not hitch a ride on an animal instead? That's a big improvement. Riding a horse, for example, doesn't require nearly as much of your energy as walking does. Plus, you could hook up a cart or a wagon to carry things with you or move several people at a time. Now, on a horse, people could go from one side of the continent to the other in only about three to five months. That's definitely a lot better than six to eight months, but it's still such a long time. There were also new challenges that came along with having animals to carry you or pull a wagon for you. Now you had to care for them, bringing them to fresh water and letting them rest. Plus, you had to get food to feed them, like oats or hay, plants that had to be grown. It took a lot of work planting those crops and then harvesting them. And that's not even food people got to eat. That was just the food for the horses. Surely there must be some better way to get around, people thought. In fact, you know that there's a better way. Things we use for travel today, like airplanes and cars and trains, but these weren't invented until the 1800s and the 1900s. Each one is incredibly complex, made of many different parts working together. These machines weren't just thought up overnight. It took many years to develop them into what we know today. But it still seems like a big jump. How did we go from having to travel everywhere on foot to riding animals, to then having amazing machines like cars and trains and airplanes. It turns out the first clue was actually discovered more than 2000 years ago. An ancient Greek inventor named Hero came up with a toy, a little device like this. You could take off the top and fill it with water. Then you can heat it over a flame. What do you think will happen? Watch. Let's see that again. 
When the water begins to boil inside, it becomes steam, which builds up inside the container. Then the steam shoots out of the openings on the sides of the container. Since the openings are angled a little bit, the container starts to turn and spin. No one, not even Hero himself, thought about using this device to make it easier for people to get around. For Hero, it was just something fun to play with and show off to friends at parties. But does it have potential to help people get around? How could this be useful to people? What do you think? All right, kiddos, I want you to head to your Google Classroom because this is the end of Mystery Science for today. I want you to tell me how you think this device could be useful. What could we use this device for? So think super hard. Give us the best example you can come up with, and we will see you for science tomorrow.